A very good dry afternoon to you from here in Rothstein Park, beautiful Chicago, Illinois, for this afternoon's game between the Philadelphia Brown Trousers and the Chicago Tea Tottlers. At this time, we'd like to introduce the starting lineup for visiting Philadelphia Brown Trousers. Batting first, the center fielder, number 11, Hogue Wilson. Batting second, the right fielder, number 41, Truss Grundelson. Batting third, the second baseman, number 12, Pickles Dillhoffel. Batting fourth, the first baseman, number 2, Murky Goodbar. Batting fifth, the catcher, number 10, Trant Sovin. Batting sixth, the third baseman, number 9, Bent Wildly. Batting seventh, the left fielder, number 6, Willie Pregnet. Batting eighth, the shortstop, number 4, Nikki Lice. And batting ninth, the pitcher, number 54, Moose Marsage. And let's give a good, dry, wholesome welcome to the Chicago Tee-Tattler. The left fielder, number 23, Umpty Pool. The first baseman, number 13, Crispy Yellow. The catcher, number 14, Moopy Pound Cake. The shortstop, number 42, Bowtie Harvey. The second baseman, number 35, Cowie Bangett. The right fielder, number 22, Dean Barron. The center fielder, number 30, Better Frosty. The third baseman, number 2, Nevada Escargo. And taking the mound for this afternoon's game, the starting pitcher, number 70, Marlott Giepson. Hey, good afternoon to you all. My name is Hubbard Baloney. This is WMAQ, Chicago Radio. This is T-Tartler Radio. As the Chicago T-Tartlers at 20 and 24 play game number 45 of this Continental League season for the year 1920. They've got the Philadelphia Brown Trousers in town for the final game of that three-game series. Who are 25 and 19 and seriously flirting with a run at first place and the new Ohio Debonairs. No! The Brown Trousers have taken both games from this series so far. 3-2 to two, uh, three days ago on the 8th, and yesterday 12-6, to six, a, a hit fest that saw the, that certainly saw a lot of the, uh, well, it saw a lot of the, uh, the bullpen get used and, uh, frankly, uh, <laughs> even into a bit of a submission. However, Malach Jepsen is on the mound. He did walk the first batsman, which is Hogue Wilson. Gets Trust Gronderson to pop up into foul territory. Movie found Kate behind the plate for that one. And it is going to be Dil Pickles Dillhoffel on first with a single right up the to the right fielder, Dim Barron. This brings up Murky Goodbar. So Malach Jepsen, a 4-3 and three record for Jepsen. Strike! An ERA of 5.67, 13 strikeouts, 60 innings pitched in 11 okay. games. Hey. Gets Goodbar to hit that one right up the first base line. It will be uh, out at first. Crispy Yellow scoops it up and steps on the back. So runners on second and third with two outs. Harvey getting the first pitch uh, fielded from Trant Sovin and will strand the two. So the one hit, the one walk, but no run scored. As taking the mound for the Brown Trousers is the ace and I believe the strikeout Strike. leader of the Continental League, Moose Massey. Nope, five. With a 4-4 four four record, an ERA of 4.92. Passing his 12th game of the season. Fills up the count for Umpty Pool to get things started. Who's Take going to walk to start things off and lead off the bottom of the first for the t -tartlers. He's batting 378. That is walk number four for him this season. Moose Marsage does not throw that many walks Three. either. That is walk number eight for Marsage. And it brings up Crispy Yellow who's batting Ball 337. Break. One and two counts. 
Stays the same as that fourth pitch is fouled. Foul ball. Really working the pitch count of Moose Mossad early on, trying to get to him early. Strike three. Oh. And he will strike out Crispy Yellow after I believe that was seven pitches. Seven or eight. Well, no, no, uh, no mind that one. It is Moopy Pound Kick. Ball inside. To the plate for the two Dockers. The catcher. I think 263 for the season. Take your base. He will walk, so that will be the second walk of the game for Moose Massage. And actually, actually, walk number 13 for Moopy Pound Kick this season. Bring us to Bowtie Harvey. Batting 377, however, with one in the scoring position, is back to 441. And he hits that one very high up into the air. It is going to be just a warning track. Whitney's pregnant, making the catch and keeping Humpty Pool at first, at second base, excuse me, preventing him from tagging up. So two outs. How we bang it. Fouls off the first pitch, which is pitch number 20 already for Moose Massage. Chicago seem to have their strategy, get Moose Massage to throw a lot of pitches early, get him out of this game even earlier, but when he can throw strikeouts like that, gets Howie Bangett swinging. Well, then you still have a chance in this game. So we're through one, and it's been very eventful for being scoreless after one inning. Two runners stranded for the T-Tartlers, and Lord Jefferson takes them out again, facing Bent wildly. Who's batting 269? That's Three home runs, 10 RBIs. Been sharing time with Chunk Dimwitty at third base. And he's gonna pop that one up on a two and one count. Into foul territory, Dim Baron take the job to foul territory. Nick Catch, it's out on a one. Three pregnant left fielder. 268, so different uh, batting average. Off uh, pace from last season, he was batting 317 for the Philadelphia Brown Fowlers uh, in just about as many games. So we're at the point where uh, statistics now from last season are about uh, possible. Oh. We, we played a 42 game season, of course, last year. We're doubling it this right. season, of course, there's a whole season in place. Willie Pregnant's going to strike out. That is the first strikeout of the game for Malort Jefferson, and number 14 for him this season. He does not throw a lot of strikeouts. Strike. So Mickey Lice, well, he's not throwing Strike. that many in uh, the first. Yeah, in, in, in last well. season, 15 for him as well. So there we are. Uh, so this is on pace for him, I guess. Nope. Two and two count for Mickey Leist, the shortstop. Going to grab that one right to the third baseman, Nevada Escargo. Takes a moment, sets himself, throws it right to Crispy Yellow, and it's a one to three inning. In round trousers. Bringing Dim Barron to the plate. And Dim Barron, sixth in the batting order, however, he is uh, someone you want to watch out for. Break. Batting 264, he's got eight home runs, That's 24 up. runs batted in. Off the plate. This is a very powerful batsman. He had six home runs in 19 games for the Memphis Mud Pigs. Broken bat into foul territory right behind the plate. Should be easy for Tron Sovin. Put out number one. For my Memphis Mud Pig is the first out of the game. Is better thrusty, who was batting 409 last season. A modest 352, so again, pretty good. And he's going to pop up the whole Wilson in shallow center for out number two. The thrusty uh, found his way back into the starting lineup again for the two A bit of a, 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 bit of a carousel for the, for the, uh, the outfield. Trying to find that proper uh, combination of Outfielders, who have been the only uh, consistency as of late. This is a uh, bit of form with Better Thrusty and of course Jim Barrett coming in. And hurling his bat in anger is Nevada Escargo, who is going to strike out to bring us to the end of two. Well, it is a scoreless game. And Moose Masich comes to the plate to start things off in the top of the third, facing his counterpart, Mullot Jepson, who of course. Right. Off the bottom of the third. Oh. A long 
far foul ball. Couldn't get to it with Jim Barron. Great three. Oh. And he gets him looking and just a look of shock from Moose Marsage. But uh, back to the dugout he has to go. And with one out, it's time for the second three. round of the of the batting order for the Brown Trousers. Paul Willison. We see one and one count already. That's going to just dribble right to Bowtie Harvey. And the, well, it was moving slow enough that it was easy enough for him to run out of the pit, the throw. Well, Hope Wilson is on with a single. Uptime. And that is a bit of a, a bit of fortune no for the brown trousers. There's normally uh, just a little bit more of a, no. just a little bit more of velocity on that hit, and it actually would have been uh, grounded out. He actually was by not making good contact there. Fascinating this Break. game, isn't it? Uh, full count for Cross Grundelson. Ball four. Take your bet. Who will walk and put runners on first and second with no with one out for Pickles Dill Harful, who's batting 437, seven home runs, 21 RBIs. He's batting 529 with one of those scoring positions. Break. This is the person you absolutely must get out Outside. Uh, if you want to stand a chance when you already have runners on base. Break. He does know how to smash it in a uh, in a way that can bring runners home. Ball inside. His contact is 95%. He does not get good contact. Jeps in over to Harvey. Not in time to yell with the dealer's choice, but it is out number two. So runners on the corners for Murky Goodbar. That will bat in one run, so that's going to be RBI number 35. For Murky Goodbar as it's an RBI single to make it one to nothing in favor of Philadelphia. Here in the top of the third, an RBI single touching the third base line. Front Sovin is going to load the bases up with a single, getting right past the diving Bowtie Harvey. Not enough uh, to bring home the runner from third, which is Cross Grundelson. Break. And Bent Wildly has the bases loaded with two outs. Oh, has only 10 RBIs this season, Three. batting 269, and actually worse with runners in scoring because it's 227. Oh. And he will strike out looking to Ooh. retire the side. So that is a big, big out to get from a lot. Jepson allows the one run, but strands the three. And gives, well, again, see if he can bring his own luck. That's up. As Jepson won't even visit the dugout, he will go right to the plate. To start things off here in the bottom of the third. Facing Moose Marsage. Big swing from Jepson. Two and two the count. And he will strike out. So that will be strikeout number four today for Moose Marsage in just a fascinating uh, display. I see the horse tonic may have been uh, working just a bit better. And that's going to be right past the glove. Umpty Poole is going to be on with a single. Fortunately, I don't know if that's going to be an error or not. But uh, Ben Wildly could time. not dive onto that one, so it is a single for Umpty Pool. Break. And brings us to Crispy Break. Yellow, who struck out in the first. Crispy Yellow batting 337. Is that going to drop? No, it's going to be right to the glove of Ben Wildly for out number two. Whoopi Pound Kick walked in the first. Let's strike one go by. That's low. Takes ball one. That's inside. Ball two is inside. Good eye. No swing yet from pound kick. That's up. That one is high for ball three. A three and one count. Take your base. And Moose Marsage will walk his third batsman for the day. Bringing Bowtie Harvey to the plate. With runners on first Up and second, Bowtie Harvey. Adding 377 this season. Break. With runners in scoring position, that's 441. That's down. That's outside. Ball four. Take and he will walk. So, Howie Bangett has runners on all three bases. The bases are, in fact, loaded. Break. And this is a very good opportunity. No, but he gets Cowie Bang it swinging to retire the side. 
at the end of three, three runners are stranded. Well, it's a mirror image of how the top of the third ended for the brown trousers. And we are seeing it's going to be difficult to bring runs home in this game. Willie Pregnet starting things off for the brown trousers. Keeps it high up into the air. That should be playable. Better thrusty. Calls off the... Uh, the makes the catch for out number one. Look, Jepson at 55 pitches already here in the top Ball of the four. Looks like we uh, might have to see Ball the time. bullpen come into use uh, quite a bit for both sides. Uh, no. counts are getting very high for both pitchers. Ball four, take your base. That will be Mickey Lice walking. That is a very interesting uh, predicament here. That is actually the third walk of the game Break. for Mickey, uh, for Malort Jepsen. Break. Moose Marsic struck out at his first at bat. Bit patient, one and two the count. Lays down a bunt, should be playable. Yes, he will sacrifice bunt. Out number two, it does move nice. To second base. And it's going to position for Hope Wilson. First pitch lining out to Nevada. Escargo to retire the sides. Get to the bottom of the fourth to the one to nothing game with Chicago taking the plate. Dim Barron, 0 for 1 today. No, listening to side. WMAQ, Chicago's only home for the Chicago T Tartlers. My name is Hubbard Baloney. This is the broadcast. We are here in the bottom of the fourth here in Rothstein Park. That's up. Take your base. And a leadoff walk of Dim Barron. So, oh goodness me, uh, Moose Marsic throwing as many strikeouts as he has walks. Strike! That's a thrusty. Starts things off by taking strike one. Inside. One runner, one runner on. Strike! Big swing on that one. And attempt to steal. And uh, that is Barron in with a stolen base. Ball low. It is stolen base number nine of the season for Jim Barron. Oh. Two and two the count as that one is foul. Trusty takes that one. That's high for ball three. Ball four. Thank and you. another walk. So Trusty is on first with Barron on second. And here comes Nevada Escargo who struck out in the second inning. That is first at bat. Off the plate. That's inside. Two and count. Right through the glove of Goodbar to kill the Hoffle. And a fancy dance. Double play right to Moose Marsage. So, Dim Barron goes to third. And here is the pitcher spot with two outs. My Lord Jepsen takes ball one. Jepsen is batting 364 this season. Eight hits from 22 at bats. I guess eight from 23 will move that down a bit after today. And he will strike out swinging. Well, the Fancy Dan double play to end the fourth inning. Brought to you by Fancy Dan Follicle Products. Put more pop in your quaff with Fancy Dan. You can try all of their assorted elixirs and tonics. Make your hair as shiny, sheen, glimmery, and gleam. You can try their sculpting epoxies, their styling salves, they have crimping powder, and of course, gelatin based inside. tonics. Because don't be a Mitchell. Well, why be a Mitchell when you can be a fancy dam? Break! Jepson on the mound, here in the top of the fifth, facing Cross Brundleson, gets him striking out looking. That is strikeout number four on the day for... for, uh, for my lord inside. Jepson. Inside. That's up. with a single. This is his first time, his third time on base. Today is second hit. He did hit one of those twice. One of those times. That's going to move him to second as that looks like a wild pitch just in the dirt. Poopy Poundcake trying to throw his body into it. And goodbye. Hits it high and far. And it's going to clear the wall. So that is a home run to industry. Hit by Murky Goodbar, a two-run home run. 
It is now three to nothing in favor of the brown trousers here in the top of the fifth. Murky Goodbar in is responsible for all three Bang. runs produced so far today. No he had the RBI single in the third and hits a full run home run to industry. about Escar go throw in time and the two outs it's bent wildly struck out of his last at bat he's over two today hits it foul Three. swings at strike two that was outside actually got him Blow. biting at that one ball one is in the dirt Blow. fouls off the fourth pitch of this at bat teasing at 90 pitches seems like this might be his last Time at the mound. Today I can't imagine him going further. But it's high for ball two. And that's going to drop right into shallow center. Line drive. He's on with a single. Bet a uh, thrust. He steals it. And Ben Wildy is on with his first hit of the game. And yes, that will do it. Big Peters comes in from the Lord right. Jepson to face Willie Pregnant. So Big Peters. Gets him to foul off for 0-2 the count. Fig Peters 5-0 record, so he comes in and he does get results for the T-Tartlers. A 6-1-3 ERA, 14 strikeouts in 23 games. He gets the third out. And the two-run home run by Murky Goodbar, brought to you by industry brand, colognes, perfumes, and fragrances. Because if you're having a good night on the town, and a young lady asks, what is that intoxicating smell Whoa. that I smell on your person? You say, my good, my, my dearest. That is the toilet industry. Found whatever smells are sold. Well, Lumpty Pool is going to fly that one out to Willy Pregnet for the first out of this, the bottom of the fifth. The Tartlers down three to nothing. And on two today is Crispy Yellow. Hit that one foul for a one and two count. Still facing Moose Massey, who will be happy to get out of this inning. He's up to the 80s as he's pitching down as well. And that's a ground out for Crispy Yellow. So Moose Massey's 86 pitches. He faces Moose Pound Cake, who walked at both of his at bats. That's inside. Takes a swing for ball one. That is high. Ball two. The control that's is starting to get away from Moose Massey today. Break. Takes a swing for strike two, Bill count up, and that's high! That is far! Oh, it's to industry! A home run from Boopy Pound Cake. Puts the T-Tartlers on the board. It's 3-1. to one. A solo home run by Boopy Pound Cake, his fourth of the season. And it puts the T-Tartlers on the board. Marsage stays on the mound and hits 92 no, pitches. Pitch 93 is a ball to Bowtie Harvey. No that is a foul. No. And he gets Harvey to line it out to pick his Bill Harper. Well, I have to imagine that Moose Marsage's day is up as Mickey Lice takes the plate to start the top of the sixth. Moose Marsage is on deck with Mickey Lice at the plate. But I got to imagine they would probably sub out Moose Marsage. I can't imagine he would continue to pitch in this game. Hmm. As Big Peter's a 2 0 count already Five. facing Mickey Lice. Walked his last at bat. 0 for 1 today. 227 his average. He's fielding a general at short stop. Hmm. Gonna pop that one up. It should be an easy catch for Jim Barron. And it's out number 1. So I imagine Moose Marsage's day will be up. And coming in. Well, no, they will put Marsage in this. At the place, well, my goodness. Uh, shows what I know. I am not the manager of the uh, Philadelphia Brown Trousers, nor do I pretend to be one. That's up. Uh, the count, time. three and one from Peters. Break. Takes strike two down the middle. Does Marcin. Swing! And is it going to drop? No! Good. It's going to be in the glove of Ben Thrusty for out number two. And Hog Wilson. Faces Big Peters with two outs. That's up. Wilson had a single in the third Break. inning. He's one for two today. 
did walk in the leadoff spot. Nope. He got this game off. Two and one the count for Wilson. I think 279. And he will walk. Do another walk. But Wilson brings Truss Grundelson to the plate. He has a walk on his uh, ball sheet today as well. He's over two otherwise. Ball one is just outside. Ball high. Ball two go up. It's high. He does starting to uh, wave a bit. Three and all the count. Take your base. And that's a four pitch walk for Big Peters, putting Grundelson back on first <clears throat> for the second walk of the day for him. And Dillhoffer will hit it right to Bota Harvey to strand the two runners and bring us to the end of the inning. So, bottom of the sixth, T Tottlers down by two, and Dick Doodlebick will come out of the bullpen to replace Moose Moss here in the bottom Whoa. of the sixth. Doodlebick had a great performance in the prior game. He got a save on his record. No, he's not a typical say uh, opposing pitcher. He did come in and he's got a, an ERA of 9.24. He does give up a single to Cowie Bangit to start off the bottom of the sixth. The so Moose Massage will be done after five innings. Break. And uh, this does give the teetotalers what they wanted. However, nope, they did nine. have issues with the bullpen in the prior game. Vip Cray Cray coming in uh, after uh, Shackleford Stanwick's day was over. However, that is going to tie this game up. Dim Barron hits it to industry. A two-run home run from Dim Barron ties this game up. Home run number nine for him this season. And that is a tie game with better thrusty at the plate. No outs. Dick Durovic giving up home run number 12 for him this season. Outside. Ball Run, better thrusty. All for one today, he did walk in his last at bat in the fourth inning. That's outside. Fills up the count, does Doodlebick. Ball four, take your base. Another walk. So Doodlebick puts Thrusty on, ba on base. Bring us to the 0 2 Nevada Escargo. Strike. First pitch down the middle for strike one. Pops it up high. It's foul, unable to be played by uh, by Trant Scoven, excuse me. Two and two is that one is high. Oh. And right to the glove. Oh, good bar who steps on the mat for a fancy dance double play. Well, two outs, cleaning the bases off. And it's time for Big Peter. Ball time. Break. Big Peters, uh, Strike three, no you're this up. season, and he's going to strike out, so that will be a, 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 well, a, a game-saving situation. I think it could have gotten out of hand, as Dick Dudovic does give up the home run to tie this game. However, the T-Tartlers find themselves back in it. Strike. You're in the top of the seventh. With Murphy, Woodbar, right. who did hit the two-run home run, so this is a difficult, uh, this is a difficult batsman to face right at the start. Ball is in the dirt for ball three, three into the count. Ball four. And that will be good ball walking, so I guess that's better than him getting any sort of extra base hit, I imagine. However, just put a runner on first to lead off the seventh for Trant Sovin. Break. No outside. Break. Sovin seems to have lost his uh, no. starting uh, spot in the lineup. He comes in for Ding Low, who has just been batting like a, a fiend for the uh, Three. Three. round thousand and in the most uh, respectful of ways. Hmm. That'll be a strikeout for Big Peters getting Sovin bring up bent wildly with one out. A ground ball right up the uh, right to the right fielder, Dim Barron. And Wildly is on with his second hit of the game. 
And that will be it for Fig Peters. In comes Dervish Chops. Three. So Chicago finding themselves using the bullpen quite a bit yet again. Chops is going to give up a single right to Dim Baron. It will hold all the runners from going home. So the bases are loaded for Chops now. And in comes Grief Barlow. Three. For Mickey Lice as a pinch Three. hitter. Well, this is an interesting uh, substitution, I must say. Grief Barlow. Uh, the the Chops. It does score one run. And in comes Chunk Dimwitty. Another pitch hitter, and that's going to drop into a diving Dim Baron's glove. And the Brown Trousers have taken a 4 2 3 lead. In the bottom of the seventh, Grief Bottle comes in at shortstop, which is not what I imagine. Ball is the inside. plan for the brown trousers. However, they did get the. Um, however, they did get a. Uh, they did get the winning run, Outside. or they potentially the game-winning run here in the bottom of the seventh. Low. Umpty pool. Ball four. Take your base. Will walk for the second time today, as Vip Cray Cray has been just a lights-out pitcher. And in comes Lavender Sandalbags for Crispy Yellow, which is an interesting move. Sandalbags has been over three today. Uh, excuse me, oh, Yellow has been over three today. But Lavender Sandalbags gets a lead-off hit. And he represents the go-ahead run on first. Well, with no out, it's Cray Cray in a bit of, uh, in a bit of bother, however. Pound Kick is the person you want to uh, have with, with runners on the way he's been playing today. Okay. A two and two count. That is ball three inside. Pound Kick being very careful. Fouls off that one, so count stays full. Take your base. And will walk for Pound Kick. Loads the bases. And Vip Cray Cray is in a bit of uh, a dangerous position with Bowtie Harvey. What a time to hit a home run number 17 for Harvey this would be. 16 home runs on the season, 35 runs batted in. A 4.41 average with runners in scoring position. He's over for two today. That will bat one in, perhaps two. Hope Wilson going to try to beat the runner out at home. Not in time, it's a two run single for Bowtie Harvey. And the T-Tottlers have taken the lead here in the bottom of the seventh. I must say, Vip Cray Cray does not usually make these kinds of performances. But, you know, take him when you can get it as Cowie Banks will hit a single and load the bases yet again for Jim Barron. And that will be it. Hindi Bonetti will come in to relieve Vip Cray Cray here in the bottom of the seventh. That is, well, that is a wild pitch that uh, ends up Keeping the runners there, good, good fielding by Trant Sovin. Ball inside. That's inside. Three and two count. And the Benetti gets him to infield pop it up. Fly. It's an infield fly rule. Oh. And better for oh. Rusty. Oh. It's at the good bar to follow back to Bonetti. A fancy Dan double play to end the inning. So, the Tea Tartars find themselves in the lead here in the top of the eighth. Five to four. A nice, uh, a nice spring of hits for Chicago. And in comes Ainsley Snake Quacker, as will Ren Bugby. So Bugby coming in at center field, Snake Whacker at first base. Dervish chops, whacks that one down and gets well gets Hope Wilson out at first. Go 
Oh, Taihavi dives onto that one. Is it going to be in time? No, it is not in Well, it is in time. He trusts uh, trust, trust Brodelson for out number two. Ball inside. And here is Pickles Dillhoffel facing Dervish Chops. Chops is a great pickup uh, from uh. the teetotalers uh, due to the unfortunate uh, Thank you, base. death of Luke Glabich. He will walk Pickles Dillhoffel. But with two outs, here's Murky Goodbar. That's a good man to get on at the plate when you need a run. Good. Hits that foul for a one and one count. And right to Dervish Chops, throws it to first for the third out, and retires the sides. Here we are into the bottom of the eighth, and the T-Toppers find themselves in a very good position. Another chance to add some more runs to the score, to the scoreboard with Nevada S. Cargo. Straight. Not had the best of days, to be honest with you, facing Kidley Bonetti. And that bounces off the wall, the very low wall is right field, and oh goodness me, Nevada Escargo is on with a very loud double to start things off. I thought that could have been a couple more. And outside. Break. Well, that is double number eight for Escargo. That was double. literally millimeters from being a, a home run. And in comes Curtis Burgess. Will be on with a single and that will back home potentially. Yes, it does bring home. It does bring home the run up. So it's now six to four in favor of the T Tartlers. Inside. And Curtis Burgess, who was batting 321 Three. this season, makes a very important oh. potentially. Walk for Umpty Pool and in comes Gravy Train. Infield fly. Infield fly rule is called for Ainsley Snake Whacker. And with one out, runners on first and second. Gravy Train, the closing pitcher, might be coming out for those potentially the last two uh, outs of the game. <laughs> Ball inside. Two and two Mike. count. Fills it up with ball three, just barely above the strike zone. Pops it up. Should be an easy one for Trant Sovin if it's in play. Oh. It is, and it's out number two. So Bowtie Harvey. Last that bat was a two-run single. We give the T-Tartlers the lead for the first time this game. Curtis Burgess has helped out by adding another run to it with his single. He's on second at the moment. Harvey's going to ground it right to Goodbar, who will take the jog for out number three. Will Gravy Train prevents any sort of further uh, damage? And will be Sovin, Wildly, and Pregnant with Jepsen Schwanwich on the mound. To get the, hopefully get the save for oh. the T Tartalus. He's only has three saves this season in the first half. Two and one the count facing Franz Sovin, the catcher. Will be a fairly easy out. Sovin has not had much luck to be at a single. And he will get him to line out right to Bowtie Harvey for the first out. So one away. Here is Bent Wildly, two singles in his last two at bats. He's two for four today. Right. Swings at the first one, strike one. No. Ball one goes up there. The Chicago Chicago would love to go to 21 and 24. And uh, ruin the potential sweep of the brown trousers. That's going to be out number two. Also the Bowtie Harvey. Throw in time to Snake Whacker. 
And this is Willie Pregnant, the final out of the game, potentially. No. On deck is, well, I believe it was Reaper Barlow before. Whoa. I'm not certain if it still is. No, outside. Or if they will choose to, uh, well, for the win. He will walk, so that will put Pregnant on on first. And Reaper Barlow now represents the tying run here in the top of the ninth. Outside. Dunk Dimwitty was the ninth spot That's in the lineup, but I imagine that is uh, going to be Gravy Train unless they choose a... No, that's low. They choose another batsman. Strike. That is in for strike one, three and one count. Swing, and that should be an easy play for Bang and Throw to Snake Whacker. And that is the game, and it's a big win. It comes from behind victory for the Chicago Teton Lads. <laughs> well, late heroics from the bullpen hmm. for the bullpen of Chicago to get the win. The final score of this game, the Philadelphia Brown Trousers, four runs off nine hits. The Chicago t the six runs off nine hits. And that was quite the game. Chicago up their record to 21 and 24. <clears throat> Philadelphia will drop to 25 and 20. And that will put Philadelphia four games back of the league leading New Ohio Debonairs. Chicago will stay in fifth place, eight games out of first place, 21 and 24, three games adrift of the fourth place Pittsburgh Presbyterians, who I believe are, are playing tomorrow. Uh, their series uh, concluded with the Milwaukee Dutchman yesterday, ABH and New York, the only other game happening later today. But uh, good chance for Chicago to Reclaim some of their uh, their uh, their their confidence. Uh, the winning pitcher goes to Dervish Chops. So Jepson Schwan, which gets his fourth save of the season, Dervish Chops goes to two and zero with a win on the series on the season. Vip Cray Cray actually gets his first loss on his record. He is now five and one after getting the loss, giving up the two go-ahead runs in this game for Chicago. But that is how that will go. And we, of course, will see the Chicago t Tartlers as they get to have a tra travel day tomorrow as they go to Boston to take on the Boston Ruffians, the surging Boston Ruffians, who took two out of three games from the New Ohio Debonairs. That was an amazing sort of uh, performance from them. They, they might not be as easy of a team as uh, some people have thought to have been uh, as a team that was uh, kind of hugging the bottom of the standings. But that will, however, be for the... Uh, for Chicago, that will be, uh, in fact, Split P. Hammond on the mound for them, for the t titlers in that game. I believe that might be facing, uh, goodness me, I think that might be uh, either Bruce Dapper or perhaps, uh, uh, I'm not entirely certain who will be taking the mound for the Chicago, uh, for Boston in that one, but we'll have to find out as, as that is the sound. Uh, the Philadelphia Brown Trousers. Also have a travel day as they head back home to Philadelphia to welcome the New York Haberdashers for a three-game series. Both those games on the 13th. And, of course, uh, we'll have the away coverage here on WMAQ. We do thank our friends at the Honeybee Tobacco Company, who sponsored the entirety of the 1920 Continental League season, bringing us the finest standings of the day for every game. They are bringing us fine, fine hand-rolled cigarettes grown in the Hebel Tobacco Roads of the Carolinas, and they bring us the finest standings of the day. The third finest standee from Chicago is Dim Barron. Well, one for three with a two-run home run. Well, the go-ahead run in the game for the <clears throat> p Tartlers to give them the win. Whoopi Pound Cake got a home run in the in the game to also get to the second finest dandy of the day. And Murky Goodbop for the Philadelphia Brown Trousers. Believe to him, he is the finest dandy of the day, getting a complimentary carton of honey wheat cigarettes. He hit a three, uh, a two-run home run, and had a an RBI single to score three runs batted in and go two for four on for today. That's the Honey Wheat Cigarette Company, Honey Wheat Tobacco Company, bringing you the finest standards of the day and humbly requesting that you smoke wheat every day. That will do it for our broadcast today. We hope to see you again or see you at the ballpark when the Chicago Tea Tartlers come back to Rothstein Park on the 16th for a series where they welcome the uh, Amalgamated Baseball Holdings Team to Rothstein Park for a three-game series. However, they take the... They take the, uh, the, the they take, uh, they take the game on the road to Boston 
with a travel day tomorrow and three games in a row against the Boston Ruffians. So that'll do it for us. My name is Howard Baloney. This is WMAQ. The music will continue here on WMAQ. And until next time, I welcome you a good, uh, I wish you a good rest of the day. And to that I say, stay dry, everybody.